Hello everyone. Today is part four of our core studies. The first part, we debunked evolution, destroyed it, talked about it, and moved on. Part two, we talked about Genesis chapter one and creation in that. Part three, we talked about Genesis chapter two and creation in that. And part four, we're going to talk about Genesis chapter three Verses 1 through 4. We're going to stick with this because there's a lot that needs to be talked about in this. So. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. This serpent is indeed Lucifer, Hasatan, the devil, the liar. I talk about the devil in verses of days, Number 160 to 168. Please check that out. There's a lot that needs to be understood about our enemy, the devil. Now, the serpent is definitely the devil. As Revelations chapter 20 verses 2 and 3 said, And he laid hold of that dragon, that old serpent, that ancient serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more. So this, this ancient serpent that I talked about in Revelations 20, has been clarified as definitely the devil. Because remember, angels can shift, they can take many appearances. Just look up verse a day, number 160, 168. I talk about that a lot. So verse number four, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die, for God though doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Satan always takes a little bit of truth and mixes it to get his purpose across. Did Adam and Eve die that very day? No, but they did die. They did die internally. They did cause death to come upon the scene. They will die, but he just wants to skew the truth. Remember, rat poison is 99.99% good food. It's that 0.01% of poison in it that kills the mice and the rats. Which brings me to what I really want to talk about in this particular section, because we're going to go through all 11 chapters of the first book of the Bible, Genesis. But Psalm 119, 160, The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. The sum of the word. Satan always likes to twist and take little bits of truth and leave out the rest. He does it all the time. He does all, you will hear it in people that talk about others and talk about, they will use the Bible as a weapon because they will just use pieces of it. So I definitely wanted to hit this really hard because it happens all the time. You even have teachers these days that use little pieces of the word to actually get money, to actually deceive the world, to deceive the very elect. They do this, false teachers, false prophets, and Satan does it all the time. So I want to talk about when Satan tried to tempt Yeshua, Jesus, because he did this later. And then we're going to get back to the garden tomorrow. Matthew 4, 1 through 10. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
and after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Man, that's a long time. No food. Ugh. He was hungry. He fasted. Just imagine, you tend to be weaker when you are not eaten and when you've not slept. So this was a very weak point for the Lord. And the tempter and came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So when Yeshua was dealing with Satan, boom, he just hits him with the word of God. That's how you deal with Satan. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. So now Satan's quoting scripture. Just parts of scripture. He quotes parts. He tells half-truths. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Now you know that made Satan mad. Because it, it works with Eve. It works with so many people. But guess who it don't work with? Yeshua, who is indeed the word of God. <laughs> He's the word of God in the flesh. Again, the devil took him to the very high mountain to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and he said to him all these i will give you if you will fall down and worship me then jesus said to him be gone satan for it is written you shall worship the lord your god and him alone only shall you serve only shall you serve that's what we need to be prepared to do. We need to study to show ourselves approved. We need to know the whole word of God. For all of it is profitable for teaching, for understanding, for rebuke. You don't separate the New Testament and the Old Testament. For as Yeshua said, I did not come to abolish the law. I came so that the law might be fulfilled through me. For I tell you, not a jot and a tittle will pass away until all is fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall not pass away until all is fulfilled. We need to know our word. So when Satan comes up to us with half-truths, we are ready. Because remember, one of the favorites that I always see people come, judge not lest ye be judged. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're talking bigger than that. Lord said, judge not lest you be judged. But first, take that speck out of your eye so you can take the mode out of your brother's eye. Help your brother, but don't be a hypocrite. First, fix yourself. The whole world. Don't just use little snippets. Tomorrow, we're going to get back into the discussion of what happened in Genesis chapter 3. Because it's very important that we go through our core studies and understand them so we can move on further. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to study and, and please help us as we study, have understanding and see the sum of your word, Father. See it in its context and see it in its completeness. Thank you for being the completeness of the word. May many be saved. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Goodbye.